I'm at the beach today to tell you about the fascinating geology of how something like this came to be. This, however, is not the ocean. It's not even a sea. This is a lake. This is the Great Lake Erie. How did the Great Lakes form? Why are they here, and how long will they be this way? Let's explore that today. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. You could call the Great Lakes a failed ocean. Aww. Yes, they're great, but they could have been even greater, cleaving the North American continent in twain. More twain! <laughs> so what incredible force was at work here long ago? The same mechanism within the Earth that moves the tectonic plates around the planet, occasionally breaking them apart. There began to be a, a rift. There are many so-called successful rifts where two pieces of a craton, of a piece of continental landmass, actually separate and create an ocean in between. Just as the Atlantic Ocean is the result of the splitting up of the ancient supercontinents of Pangaea, the basin that the Great Lakes lie in was initiated by the Superior Rift about a billion years ago and the St. Lawrence Rift 500 million years or so after that. But the rifting didn't go far beyond this region, and instead of a vast ocean dividing us, the Canadians will have to live with the fact that they are forever right next to the United States. Aww. Oh, hey, hey, hey. If you'll permit me, I'll continue my character assassination. Please do. Now, what was I saying about the failed rifts in the Great Lakes area? Oh, yes. It didn't end up creating an ocean, it didn't open up to the, the main ocean bodies of the world, but it did create a depression. I wanted to come to Indiana Dunes National Park right here to the shore of Lake Michigan to explain in a little bit more detail about how these amazing Great Lakes form. The Great Lakes have about 20% of all the fresh water on planet Earth. Obviously there's a lot more salt water, but when it comes to the fresh water that we can drink and other terrestrial animals can actually drink and plants for that matter, 21% of it is right here. Right now I'm going to touch Lake Michigan for the first time. That's awesome. So while the initial basin for the Great Lakes formed hundreds of millions of years ago, that's not how the lakes got their characteristic appearance. We fast forward basically to the end of history, just, you know, a measly few hundred thousand years ago, when we have the most recent glacial events. During the Ice Ages, the North American continent was in places covered by up to three kilometers of ice. In fact, the ice was so unbelievably heavy that it pressed down on the crust of the earth and compressed it such that it took thousands of years for the crust to rebound after the ice was gone. In some places that's actually still happening and the crust is still slowly getting back to where it was before the glacial events happened. But in this incredible vastness, this is obviously a basin, right? It has a lot of water in it. Well, what happened is that the enormous ice sheet, the Laurentide ice sheet, as it grew down from what is today Canada and down into what is today the United States, great big tongues of it slowly moving and like a conveyor belt, crushing and moving sand like this. Now, if you look at these waves, yeah, there's a few little waves. They're not moved by the tides. We're too far away from the oceans for tides to have any significant effect like they do in other places. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the Mediterranean Sea, which doesn't have significant waves, uh, especially due to tides, because the Mediterranean Sea is rather isolated from the Atlantic Ocean's tides. So we have all this sand here. No doubt this sand is partially eroded, weathered, rounded, by these waves, even though they're relatively few. But all of this, to get here, I had to go over just these literal mountains, that's called Mount Bentley, these mountains of sand. Well, this, these measly little waves are not creating mountains of sand. The mountains of sand were all deposited there by this glacier that was just crushing, grinding, turning into this pulverized sand, whatever it was going ac across. Glaciers are actually incredibly destructive over long periods of time, just like many other erosional features like rivers. And it pushed all of this sand up into what we see, these hills, this very beautiful hummocky terrain 
creating what are called glacial moraines. The forces at work here must have been unimaginable. Because they're constantly flowing, glaciers deposit their sediments, called till, potentially very far away from their origin, until the glacier reaches a place where warming temperatures melt the end of the glacier as fast as new ice flows into the area. Thus the terminus of the glacier appears stationary, and that's where it dumps its till like it did right at Indiana Dunes National Park at the end of Lake Michigan, just like an enormous conveyor belt forming these incredible moraines that I have to hike over. This is about a kilometer and a half from the shore of Lake Michigan, and what we see here in this, this hill looks like just any kind of other hill, except that it's made entirely of the sand. And the sand isn't made from the pounding of, of ocean waves. It was made by glaciers tens of thousands of years ago that eroded the bed of what is now Lake Michigan and pulverized that, that dirt and pushed that sand into here, which is, was essentially the terminus at one point of the glaciers and just pushed it right here, creating these hills, which are called moraines, the terminal part of where a glacier ends the sediment that it forms is called a marine. That's what it is. Let's walk up this ancient glacial moraine. But instead of learning about science in the hilly and harsh outdoors, why not take advantage of one of my favorite ways to learn about the natural world in the comfort of my own home? This video sponsor, Brilliant. To get the foundation you need to stand toe to toe with geological scientists, I recommend these courses. Scientific thinking, to get an extremely well-rounded sense of all the fundamental science concepts. Frankly, it's worth signing up for the free trial, just to blast through this course, it's a lot of fun. But then you'll probably really adore the chemical reaction and the molecules modules. Chemistry is a hugely important part of geology, which we'll see more of as we continue the cross-country tour. And you'll also want to enjoy the classical mechanics course. Physics is how we can figure out what kind of effect three kilometers of ice has on the Lake Michigan Basin. Math, of course, is the sine qua non for any physical science, including geology. Well, how much math should you have? Really, the more the better, but don't be intimidated by that since Brilliant makes it so much fun to learn everything you need to know to familiarize yourself with algebra and geometry, calculus, statistics, and even master these subjects, that's what's really amazing. Plus opening the door for the really fun stuff like vector calculus, differential equations. Imagine enjoying doing linear algebra for fun, months or years before you actually have to in school. That's what Brilliant can do. Make the hardest subjects your favorite subjects. So why not try out Brilliant for free for 30 days? Go to brilliant.org slash Plymouthy and the first 200 to sign up get 20% off a year's subscription. Now that's a good deal. Now, where was I? Oh yes, ascending the grand Indiana dunes. And now we're at the top of the glacial moraine. There's dune of sand. And about another kilometer and a half there, that way, we'll end up at Lake Michigan. One kilometer later. And there is Lake Michigan, which was carved out over thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, by glaciers that flowed down this immense basin. Just look how many meters high all the sand is. This wasn't deposited by a body of water, but by just massive glaciers. That's what these are, these moraines, which today, only, only a few tens of thousands of years old, which is pretty young in geological terms. They're pretty loose deposits. They're not very tight concretions. Uh, maybe in a few tens or even hundreds of thousands of years, they could be compressed into sediments that become more like rock and eventually into actual, actual rock. And later when we go to the Badlands of South Dakota, we'll see something really cool where we'll actually see loose sediment that's been compacted into almost rock. It almost feels completely solid there, but it still crumbles, it's really cool. It's absolutely fascinating. It's also interesting to see here, uh, these sparse grasses, they've colonized here, so they've helped to retain this, these dunes here, this line of dunes. If the grasses weren't there, then there would be significant erosion. In fact, for that reason, this, National Park is obviously a protected area. There's no industry here. You don't want to pave here. All the beaches in the world 
once looked something a lot more like this. A lot more trees and obviously wildlife. Uh, we human beings just love being around the beach ever since the 20th century in particular. You know, it makes sense, I, I get it. But in doing so, we've necessarily had to destroy complete ecosystems. And that's just how it is with all of our cities and civilization for the moment. But it's so wonderful that places like this have been preserved so that we can appreciate the way it kind of is supposed to be and preserve some of the biota, some of the flora and the fauna in their natural environments. So they could actually live the, they, in the way that they intended to live. The Great Lakes are located well within the interior of the North American continent, where the plate tectonics are relatively stable, so it's not likely that the rift zone will become active in the foreseeable future. And we can expect the Great Lakes to be with us for a long time. But as Niagara Falls continues to erode upstream, as we saw in the Niagara Falls video, it will eventually cut into the basin at Lake Erie, potentially draining it and the other Great Lakes upstream by some meters in height. How long until that happens? Go see the Niagara Falls video where I tell you all about it. Look how these seagulls are getting scared. When are seagulls afraid of people when people don't normally come around? Well, I hope you enjoyed this geology excursion with me. If you ever wondered exactly how and why these Great Lakes warmed, now you know a little bit about that. Continue with me this fascinating and fun geological journey. Thanks to each and every one of my Patreon supporters. Remember to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Walete. Something that, like that happened. That's a good example. It's not actually happening. I'll just skip that. Okay. <laughs> um, the rifts are often formed. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, I'm at the ocean today to tell you about this. Yeah. I'm at the ocean today to tell you about a very important aspect of geology in Earth. This is ah! just like an This is why I should do some I think that's all I had to say about that. <laughs> but here we have this beautiful, loosely integrated uh, glacial marine-like terrain. That's a, very, a little bit redundant.